Ooh, that transition note hits extra hard at this point in the series. <laughs> Oof. This is one of those openings that gets better with each watch, like all the great ones do. Hasn't been an easy road <laughs> for Thorfinn. <laughs> That's for sure. Look for the horns. Where there is horns, there is also booze. Episode 11, A Gamble. Very timely. I was just talking about this. The weather is changing here too, and there's a smell. There's a smell and an emotion that comes with fall. <laughs> Guy had two of his fingers cut off, hasn't lost a step. Still knows what the right priorities are in life. Sausages. This guy gets it. Very modest. But are they tall with big asses like Jennifer Lawrence? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. See, it's all just an illusion. It's all an illusion. It's just a series of smoke and mirrors to disguise us from the fact that life is just one, one long speed dating event that meetup even going to it's not about pottery it's not about singing japanese songs of karaoke you don't actually like to knit you know what you're there for we all know it's all just layers and layers of disguising just base human traits needing to wear a cloak around the rawest most basic primal human instincts for the sake of societal har harmony and cohesion but yeah christianity <laughs> I mean, technically correct. <laughs> Maybe. They wouldn't be laughing if you could make beer appear in their horns. Ooh. I hope this is Thorkel actually having a deep thought. Oh, he's in the he's in the cart. He's captured. Can't tell if crazy or joking or serious. They have Thorkel. <laughs> that is the eyes of a man with vision and insanity. Man, the hell looks awesome! Take that, Christians! The man's gotta believe in something. You're not making a great case for yourself right now. <laughs> His lord and savior, booze. Someone give this man a horn. <laughs> Ask and you shall re receive. It's interesting battle ideology, sort of. Whichever one gets me drunk. Oh no, he actually said that. Oh no. At least he's a man who knows who he is. We found common ground and solved all of religious disharmony. In one scene. There's something so great about Thorkel's depiction. He's simultaneously like fun and has his childhood wonder and is insane and terrifying. And those things are deeply connected. It would be really great if they hashed this out in more depth. Like I would watch a whole episode and then debating this. Is that weird? Probably more fun to just get to the action. But I don't know. I kind of want to hear their cases for uh, Valhalla versus Christianity, God or whatever. I think that would be a blast. I mean, if I had to guess, you know, not really knowing much about religion at all, it's probably like with many things and like with what I was just saying in jest about life being one big speed dating event, actually going to be more similar than it appears. It's going to be just some fundamental things. And, you know, there's this fundamental problem that I, I find popping up in so many things. One of those things where once you see it, you can't unsee it, that there's this eternal problem of confusing source for signal. You know, anything that is truly great and huge and divine and beautiful and insightful is almost inevitably going to be really difficult and complex and nuanced and require a lot of suspension of things that have sort of been placeholders for belief in order to, you know, help us feel like we, we're making sense of the world. And so most of what we get is actual truth taken to mean something like, you know, real, true, universally connected wisdom or something like that, that has been filtered down through multiple iterations so that it's kind of a, a shadow of its formal, former self, but people will fixate really heavily on that iteration of it and then get really defensive about what it means. Things like religion and philosophy, which fundamentally I think don't need to be separated categorically if 
you know, they're really the a pursuit of actual understanding is about getting to some fundamental connection to what things actually are and what it means to be human and live to the best iteration of humanity that that is possible since we are human beings we are of the planet and therefore exists itself and none of it is truly accidental in that it's not disconnected from the way things are it's like a branch of the tree and therefore is in a sense of the tree and like aligning oneself with that stream using the maximal faculties that we have all the parts of us you know the animal parts of us the sort of newer more abstract conceptual versions of ourselves so that we can participate in maximizing the potential and you know capturing the raw energy the raw capacity that we have facilitating that state as best as possible finding a place in it and not creating a set of circumstances where if perpetually or widely applied would mean the loss of that potential or would you know act as sort of a spitting in the face of of those gifts and that's a pursuit that no you know no field no particular branch of any ideology has a monopoly on because there just sort of is what is you know there's sort of just truth even if we can't fully grasp it in its raw form but then what you get is like that not only watered down for comprehension and for mass appeal, but also very often tailored specifically for special interests. And it kind of grips that pursuit in a way that is not really of the pursuit itself, but is something else. It's something more limited, let's say, than like full truth. So like me trying to look broadly at what they're saying about being a warrior and entering Valhalla, there's some real beauty in that. It just seems like as a group of people that spends all their time fighting, that warrior and, you know, being strong would have a very specific interpretation of what that is. But they're all, if pure hearted, trying to arrive at something that is good. And if not fully there, trying to arrive at something that helps them operate and function in the world to greatly varying degrees of success. But it won't really be about the, the philosophy itself. I don't think as much as it is about the individual and sort of their scope and how they apply it and whether they're farther away from or closer to that, that actual source, you know, the things that, that really are and really work. Ooh, are they getting attacked? I I'm waiting on Edge to see what Canute is going to do. His character is going to be significant, but when and how? This is just their battle plan for every situation. It's just, just send Thorkel in with a piece of wood. It's like a toothpick for him, though. That's what he did with that tree. Oh my god. Oh my god. The accuracy. He can handle big pieces of wood and small pieces of wood with deadly efficiency. This is turning into like a <laughs> Chuck Norris joke. Thorkel surrounds you. I mean, Ragnar we can do without, but at least the Highness. We have the high ground, please say that. <laughs> Just walking out. Just walking out. But, but especially the Highness. I'm thoroughly creeped out and you will enjoy your life in Valhalla. They certainly are strong. When keeping it real goes wrong. <laughs> Does Canute have no say in this? When will he find his voice? That that voice acting though, that sound of pure joy. You do not want to mess around with someone who does this for fun. You know what I mean? He's in it just to play, just for the love of the game. You don't want to mess around with people like that. This show does such a great job of making the different types. All formidable. Oh my god! In their own right. <laughs> and then just, you know, letting it play out. Thoracle is just this terrifying monstrosity that just seems invincible. Fear. <laughs> is it the onion soup again? What, are they trapped them in a ring of fire? I mean, Asclad, I would give the upper hand to just for being a little bit more level-headed, obviously, than Thorical. It's sort of consistent with his character that, you know, he doesn't really see the need to take people head on. He just is, you know, thinking about victory in a grander scheme. Thinks outside the box. I mean, really, you take out Thorical and the rest comes falling down like a house of dominoes. Surprisingly sensitive from the guy who just loves killing. 
would be in trouble. I mean, that would basically ensure victory for the entire war. That, he's all they have. <laughs> That's it. That's the strategy. Thorkel. Get in there and do your grunt work. I love you, son. Don't you think you're being a little hard on the boy? <laughs> That'd be something else. No, this is where the show keeps crossing the line with these animals. The human carnage is fine. I'll not stand for animal abuse. Poor deer. Yeah, it's clear. I mean, I feel like there's truth in all of it. You know, I don't think he's super attached to Thorfinn's life, but at the same time, it's not disinterested. Oh, Ragnar actually has some stuff, huh? I don't know. I feel like, you, do you really want to give away your position right now when you're so vulnerable? Thanks for the sniper check. Waiting. Waiting to see what Knut has in store. More animal cruelty. Whoa, he just apparated. Well, he definitely has a trademark. And that's how Knut joins the party. I like how Ragnar is just this undying advocate for Knut. He's his biggest fan, and occasionally his mother. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I really want to hear them talk about Thor's, but I don't think this is the moment. That's part of his strategy, getting people to think of him as a kid. Yes, do it, Thor's, Thor's. Yes, here we go. I fought alongside him in the great canoe battle. Helga. However, everyone knows Thor's as they should. Oh, damn. That means so much after, after all they've established with Thorkel. He's not lying. He's in Valhalla for sure. This is such a like crazy moment for, for Thorfinn. Derailing the whole thing. It's like the only thing keeping his humanity together is the memory of his father. That like lurking memory. Oh, this is setting up something really great. Faded battle. There's so many great things being set up in the show. It's gonna get just crazier and crazier, isn't it? I'm feeling a new heightened sense of excitement for the rest of the show to come. Just given how strong a lot of the elements are and how they're all so distinct and seem to be very clear in their, their underlying philosophies. Even if we haven't gotten a lot of it yet, while I don't know exactly where it's going, I feel like it's going to make for a very, very interesting series of clashes that's not just fun in terms of the drama and the action, but also what the characters represent. And I think the fact that this episode spoke to the, the varying ideologies for what the, the world means and for what glory is or, or what is rewarded by, let's say, God, makes me think that there will be something there, even if it takes some time to build to. And then also Ragnar, and then this this drunk priest, just for fun. And we'll also do whatever is opportune for me in the coming moments. Is it wait? Is it a princess? Is the prince a princess, or is he just really stunningly beautiful? Prince. Princess? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to think. I mean, the prince could just be Gojo level good looking. Ah, but if it's a princess, that would explain the lack lack of dialogue up to this point. The voice would have been a reveal. Shades of Fruits Basket. Let's just hope that this doesn't end in glass throwing and ends in us all celebrating each other's plums in Valhalla. This is such a great twist. Not the princess thing, but Kunu joining the, the party because now we have what I guess is going to be like a, a chase. You have the whole army of Thorkel chasing the rest of the crew, including some pretty big power hitters like Asclad, the drunk priest, and other notable figures. There's definitely a lot of glory to be had. And wrapped up in all of this is Thorfinn, who is sort of not of this 
at all. He, he's still kind of looking to get revenge for his father against Asclad, who has now clearly become something of a father figure to him. There's going to be a moment, I think, or a series of moments that lead to an awakening of sorts, maybe end with him in a leadership position. You have all these conflicting interests and all these different motivations all coming to a head in what seems like it's going to be a pretty epic battle or, or a series of battles. It's very exciting. Thank you.